Hello YouTube friends. I'm Jerry Rosa, Rosa String Works. We've got another little project here today. This one's quite unique. You don't do this one very often. Um, this one is a uh, Washburn entry-level mandolin. It's got a plywood top and I don't know how well this will show up on the video but the top is sunk in pretty deeply. You can see here um, or here I guess that it's below the level of this and uh, so anyway it's sunk on both sides all the way across and they're wanting it for a beginning mandolin student to learn how to play on and it's certainly good enough for that but it won't take the pressure right now the top will just cave in so I'm going to do an unorthodox fix on this. This is not the way I would normally fix a uh, high-end instrument, of course. But um, you know how they put a sound post in violins to, uh, you know, kind of hold up that treble side because there's a bass bar in a violin. Well, this one has two bars, but apparently they've either come loose or, or just sagged over time or something. I, I can't really see in there very well, and, and so I'm not 100% sure what the problem is. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two sound posts, one on either side of the bridge, just slightly behind the bridge like a violin, and we're going to jack this top back up. In order to do that, I'm going to have to put a plate on the inside back on both places where I set the peg up so that because I'm going to be putting out quite a bit of pressure on this more than on a violin, uh, I am going to put those little plates there just to make sure I don't crack the back. So this is going to be a little project. I hope you enjoy this one and uh, we'll get started on it right now. <clears throat> First thing we've got to do of course is get rid of the old strings. I told the customer when they brought them, I said, well, it's no problem to get rid of these strings because they're older than I am. And they are very, very old, you can tell by looking. So we just cut them off and get rid of them. It saves time. And we'll take them loose up at this other end too. Just yank them off of there pretty much. Maybe we'll use this one as a good example of how to string an instrument as well. And uh, there's a lot of people that do different things when they string an instrument, but we'll give you the simple, easy, foolproof method. And it works every time and been using it for 20, 30 years now, and uh, it's probably the fastest way to string and the most assured way that it will hold and, and stay in tune, etc. Of course, we were a ways from that right now. We'll uh, get to that in maybe part two of this video. Okay, we got rid of all the wire, and we'll set the bridge aside. And it definitely is sunk in pretty good. Um, it's going to be a trial and error actually to make this work. It's uh, there's no one way to measure this, and, and I'm looking for a gauge that I do have that will do some measuring. Okay, I've got the tool I'm going to be using to figure out how long I want to make this. The problem is this is so sunk in that even this tool won't really do the whole job. I'm just going to get in there and measure the height right now. And I'm just going to go by just pure experience and add a certain amount of height to the post that I'm going to build. Well, of course, I'm going to have to put a platform in there too. But uh, anyway, this gauge should help me do this, hopefully. And uh, let's see, set it in there and about where I think it needs to be. And lock her down and then get her out of there. See if the other side just happens to be about the same. And it seems like it's pretty close, so that's a good thing. I don't have to measure both sides. I'll go in the other room, cut me some pads and a little pieces of stick, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I made myself a couple of little pads out of, this is cherry wood, by the way, and uh, I didn't really even take time to do much finishing on them or anything. They're just band sawed, and they're one inch square, and I would say the thickness on them is slightly under an eighth of an inch thick. Um, matter of fact, it's actually closer to a sixteenth of an inch thick. And so they're not going to be really big supporting structures here. What they're, they're just designed to spread out the, the stress and it doesn't put the stress exactly in one little tiny spot. 
and uh, we'll put that on the bottom of the back or on the inside back and we'll set this on top of it like this and what I'm going to do right now is use this as my gate my gauge to measure approximately the height of what I'm going to do now this may be trial and error I, I may cut one of these and it may just not be long enough or it may be too long so I'm going to use this gauge this is the pencil I'm just going to from the from the tabletop I've got this sitting on the pad and from the tabletop then to the uh, top of the gauge is the exact height in there then I'm just going to take and by eyeball I'm going to add about a 3 16 here to it approximately to, to jack that top up and that'll give me I think that's more than I need but that's what I'm going to start with and then we can always cut it a little shorter I can see where the old where the bridge has been on here. So basically, I'm just by eyeball. I'm going to put this pad slightly behind where about the bridge is, um, and then I'm going to uh, I'm actually going to put a little glue on this pad, just a little bit, just to, just to keep it from if it, something would come loose that the pads don't fall out of place, um, and they can always be removed. Uh, if the top was ever taken off of this, it'd be very simple to get these out of there. So I'm just putting a dab of glue right in the center of the pad. I have a sound post setter. It's a little tool that has a little spring on the end of it. And I'm just going to connect it up to this, like so. And I'm going to insert it in here. And I believe I can guide it pretty close to where I want it and get it pretty close. It won't be perfect probably. But that way I set it in there. And then I can push it around with that. I got a, a different method that I use most of the time for violins and it's a little tiny wire just kind of a bent wire. It's a coat hanger. It's got a very very tiny hook on the end of it. it you can't probably even see the hook. But then I'm going to screw that into this peg Okay, the peg is so hard that I'm going to actually have to pre-drill this. It, it's, like I said, this is not the normal peg that I would use, but this is not a normal repair anyway, so I'm just going to go with it. I drilled a hole pretty much all the way through it, but that's mostly just so I can, and it's a tiny, tiny hole. And that way I can drill this in there with the little hook on the end, and it should hold it fairly well till I get it set in place. Yeah. That is, if I can get it set in place. I may still have it so long that I may not be able to do this. I'm going to lift it by hand even, like this, to try to help myself get it set in place. This is not going to be an easy fix. I can tell already. And it probably is just a hair long. Okay, I've got me a peg and... Um, what I did was I cut a bevel on each end of the peg, just very slight bevel, so that I can put it in there and raise it up a little bit without so much drag. And uh, we'll just have to see how that works. There we go. Now if I can get the wire out, we're, I think we're done. I think it actually stood up pretty straight. It's not perfectly straight. I'll have to move it a little bit. but. Ah, I got the wire out. Okay, it, it didn't raise it as much as I was hoping, but it'll keep it from going down any further, so that's the same process. Well, that definitely stiffened the top. I'm still on my pad, but I'm really only on the corner of my pad. I don't like that, but, but I think it's going to work fine. We'll go to the other side and see what happens. Put a dab of glue on this one in the center again. And we'll And I'm going to go cut my bevels and shorten this stick up a little bit. 
like I always say, if it was easy, monkeys could do this. And you don't see monkeys doing this. All this takes is x-ray vision, patience, and a whole lot of I just won't give up. The thing you have to realize about wood like this is after it's been under tension for you know 10, 20 years, and I don't know how old this instrument is, but it could be as old as 20 years, and maybe older than that, um, then you know it's been pushed down for that long. It does not want to go back up, trust me. It gets its own life in that shape, and that's where it wants to stay. And, uh, but, like I said, all this takes is x-ray vision and an attitude that you just won't give up, and you can get this. And I know I can get it, it's just going to take a little time, but I think I'm closer already. Matter of fact, I think I got it. Well... Let's not claim victory yet. I can see that the pad moved on me again. That helped a lot. I've got a piece of leather here protecting the top, and I'm prying the other side of the top up. There we go. Now, why couldn't it have just been that easy all along? That was simple that time. Now if I can get my wire out without it falling out, that's the trick. The wire does not want to come out. It's so the wire is so bent that it it torques this post in there when I turn this to get it loose. Maybe I just wiggle it back and forth till I get it out instead of unscrewing it out like I normally do. Come on wire, just come out of there. There, I got it. And the post is almost perfectly straight up and down this time. And that makes that top really solid right there where the bridge is going. So I think we're solid now. I would like the post to just be a hair straighter. And I'm taking a risk that I could lose it again. I think that'll do it. Okay. Well, that wasn't exactly simple. But you can see how you can make it support your top if you have a top that's caving in on a mandolin and it's a fairly common problem on the lesser expensive mandolins but if you want to keep playing them and you want to you know especially for someone like this person who's going to be a learner a beginner um, this will work I mean it won't have the best sound in the world but it'll make this mandolin work again where uh, the other fix the real fix would cost you know hundreds of dollars to take this off and, and rebuild the top correctly and it's just not worth that but uh, this fix here, we're probably going to be into it for about an hour's worth of work time I get it strung back up. So we're talking probably about 50 bucks, something in that range. So it's not too bad.